All right, good morning. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Let's uh, start the Parks, Recreation and Refuse Committee meeting. Uh, today is Wednesday, September 20th, 10 a.m. Um, roll call, please. Uh, Fardonish. Here. Gast. Here. And Pearson. Here. Awesome, thank you. Uh, our first item uh, on the agenda is the review of Mid State Assignment to Waste Management Request. Uh, however, before we get started, I just want to thank uh, Mid, uh, Solid uh, Mid State for their sponsorship or, or for our youth uh, soccer program. Yeah. We really thank you for your continued support of our uh, programs. So thank you so much. So, You've been a wonderful, uh, wonderful organization for our. Uh, so thank you. I well, we appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's always important to give back to the communities you serve. So anytime we get an opportunity like this to support such a good cause with such good folks, we're, we're always pleased to do it. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Okay. I guess we'll let the general manager take over. Sure. Um, for the committee members, there's a, I'm going to review, at least on the screen with you, a lot of documents that, that, that were prepared and have been made, made publicly available, although we didn't provide copies unless you request them. I've got some paper here, although I didn't reprint any of this stuff. Um, so you, you might recall that uh, that in, in May, mid-May, the district received a request from Mid-State Solid Waste to consider approval of the assignment of the franchise from Mid-State to Waste Management. Um, Mid-State is essentially selling their assets and their book of business, the Templeton CSD business, to, to, uh, to Waste Management. Um, this assignment, we learned pretty quickly thereafter that the assignment was, or the sale was contingent on both Templeton CSD and the County of San Luis Obispo both approving the assignment request, which have similar provisions in our franchise ag agreements. So that was uh, that was delivered in May. We provided we had a meeting about a week later uh, of this committee and, and updated you on that status and, and um, told you that we're we're, kind of, we're trying we were trying to coordinate with the county to to facilitate some sort of a a joint review um, process to to later consider the assignment. And the committee at that time said, if it's possible, you'd like to review this ahead of the board making the formal decision uh, of, of, of approving the assignment. So uh, that letter uh, that letter came in, and then uh, now there's no labels. So uh, the next document I want to bring to your call to your attention, we, we included it uh, um, in the board packet, is the um, amended solid waste agreement along with its, it has a, an amended solid waste agreement, franchise agreement actually has an amendment number one to it as well. But the, the provisions that are applicable for, for this assignment provision or this assignment request is section six of our agreement uh, with Mid-State Solid Waste. So there's there's the agreement anticipated that this circumstance might present itself during the term of the agreement, and so there's a, a detailed list of of what the district should consider in the assignment. Basically, no no interest in the agreement may be assigned, sold, or sold, etc., without prior written consent of the district. So that is really what the what Mid State is seeking: our your consent. Um, in the in the agreement, there are a number of specific provisions uh, that. It suggests the agreement anticipates that you'll look to, to uh, to determine if the consent is provided, and so it defines what what constitutes a, a sale or assignment, um, and then there's a number again a number of a number of things like franchisees' experience. So this again would be the uh, in this case mid states experience, um, financial resources. Um, Uh, et, et cetera. Anyways, there's there's a there's a whole there's several pages uh, of dealing with how this particular ten years of, of solid waste experience, et cetera. Uh, so this is all pretty well spelled out in section six of the agreement. At the time, um, and so that was made available to you back in May as well. 
At that time, we, we had already started coordinating with the county and, said, and, and asking them, well, how are they going to go about um, reviewing um, reviewing this request? And the county indicated that they they were going to hire they they had plans to hire a consultant to do the to do an independent review and produce a report that the board of supervisors would later consider. And in meeting with and uh, talking with Ron Kroll of Mid State, I said, you know, really, if the agree if the um, agreement with waste management between between Mid State and waste management is contingent upon both us and the county approving this assignment provision, um, did it matter how fast? Templeton CSD moved. In other words, if we had approved it, you know, within 60 days or something, would that would that have sped up the transaction or ultimately led to a change in service? And the answer that I got was really no, that all parties have to approve this before it can kind of move forward. And so at that time, since the county was going to go through this process and, and our internal review and our legal counsel review suggested that we at least need some independent um, analysis done. Uh, that would support the assignment for the record that we decided that we could kind of partner with the county. The county is already going to go through this formal process. And all I asked was that the county's um, scope of work include whatever they were going to do, uh, plus whatever our franchise agreement called for in terms of the assignment provision. And really, when we did a sort of a side-by-side -side comparison between the, the county's franchise agreement with Mid-State, and again, Mid-State provides services in the unincorporated area of the county that kind of around Templeton and to the south of us uh, through a, a franchise agreement with, with San Luis Obispo County, and then of course ours. When we do a side-by-side -side comparison, we had almost all the same types of requirements. The counties were a bit, uh, they might have had, instead of three years of uh, reviewing financial records, they might have said five, those kinds of things. So it was essentially the same kind of review that was gonna be required. So um, I had a chance to then work with the county on the scope of work um, in June for the, the their proposed um, study. And the county sent out an RFP and received uh, one, uh, one bid from a, a company called R3 Consulting Group. Uh, that's somebody that the county was aware of, uh, had done some work with in the past, or at least uh, had proposed work in the past. And so after reviewing the scope of the Proposal. I had agreed that the, the R3's proposal would should include all the items that I thought our board of directors needed to make the assignment decision. And so um, the county put R3 under contract and, uh, and, and sent them to work. Again, R3 works for the county, they don't, they don't work for Temple and CSD, but because of this, um, because of this cooperation, we had some involvement in the process. So R3 uh, spent maybe 60 days or something uh, producing uh, what, what looks like this, this report um, uh, here. This is the prior ver draft version. And I'll I have it up here somewhere. Uh, yeah, here it is here. This is posted online for your, uh, for your review. Final report of, of the uh, review of the assignment. And in the report, and I, I'm not, I don't plan on going through this in a lot of detail because you have it, but I, I'm, hap I'm happy to try to answer any questions uh, about it. R3 makes a summary of findings that include that waste management essentially is qualified to, um, to provide these services under the Templeton CSD and the county's franchise agreement. Uh, and they provided satisfactory proof to meet those, those conditions. Or, or those requirements. Um, so there's, a, again, a kind of a, a full report uh, on that. The report also includes a couple of uh, attachments that I think are probably more interesting. A couple that are really long, only those of you who are gonna really dive into it, um, probably subjected yourself to it, but uh, included the waste management and the report for 2022 and uh, loss of a couple of trees there. Um, and then a sustainability report was also attached, uh, but probably more importantly, or the things that I thought were more interesting uh, to us uh, were the, the two attachments that came a little later. These came to you on Monday. Um, uh, organizational chart, which, which just spells out who the points of contact will be for both uh, the county and for us for these uh, area franchises. Um, 
anyway, it's just nice to have that uh, information. And then probably, uh, again, the thing that I thought was, was most helpful or most important is that they prepared a transition plan uh, that walked through the process, the waste management proposed process to transition from mid-state to waste management. So that, uh, again, hopefully we've had a chance to review that. It's not too long, um, about 15 pages. And again, this was, this was, up, this was made available on Monday. Um, and again, I can answer any questions that you might have about it, or we can, we can go over this as, as much, much detail as you'd like. And we've got folks from waste management here that can answer questions perhaps much better than I, especially when it comes to, uh, this report. And then, um, any questions? And then uh, as we were going through this process, the county indicated that they had intended to develop a three-party agreement that kind of codified the assignment uh, provision. Again, this is this is a, an agreement um, that would have wa that waste management would be a party to, um, mid-state solid waste would be a party to, and then the county itself would be a party to that's intended to be a to go before the Board of Supervisors on October 17th. And they shared their draft agreement with us uh, last Friday, and uh, we've been able to make some minor modifications to it. And I haven't had any, I, I, I'll apologize in advance that, that I'm, I'm presenting this to you in draft, very draft form. We haven't had any conversations with Mid-State or Waste Management yet um, about the contents of the agreement, but the intent was to make this agreement as close to the county's agreement as possible so that um, there were there was less confusion and the implementation would be more smooth. And so this is this is it's actually quite straightforward. This assignment and assumption agreement. In our case, I, as we see here today, this agreement would be entered into. This agreement could be approved or authorized for execution by the board as soon as October third, but it's intended not to be entered into until October seventeenth. That's the date that the county would consider this. And in order to line up all the insurance requirements and and some other things that are necessary for waste management to actually take over the business. We want these uh, these agreements to be kind of um, approved simultaneously because this, the, the sale agreement between Mid-State and Waste Management is contingent upon both uh, both assignment requests being uh, being approved. So this uh, just documents the existing um, agreements, the franchise agreements, uh, and then it has a couple of it, it states that you know Mid-State hereby assigns the agreement to Waste Management. Um, and then there's certain requirements that would take effect uh, thereafter, and that the, this assignment relied on the representations made by waste management, uh, et cetera. This it's actually fairly straightforward and was provided to you again, not just yesterday, so so fairly recently. Um, it also has some requirements. There, there's, there's a few things that aren't yet done. Um, in, other, in other words, like waste management needs to get some permitting taken care of on its vehicles in order to provide services. In uh, in Templeton and in, in the county in San Luis Obispo um, County, um, and it has a, another little provision in here that I thought that we, that we think is important. And that is that that again, even if this were approved and dated ahead of the county's review, if the county for some reason, if our board approves it, but the county fails to for whatever reason, the agreement would never fully take effect. Um, so it's the intent of of as I understand it, the intent of waste management to, if, if, if TCSD approves the assignment and the county approves the assignment, that waste management would essentially take over on November 1st. And so that's how this is, this, that's how this is structured. Um, and we've begun coordinating, knowing this is kind of lining up and, and going forward, uh, uh, coordinating um, that. Um, so anyway, that's the, a very Reader's Digest version of the process that we've been going through over the past several months. And I think the, op the, the opportunity for this committee now is to consider the information that was made available to you, ask any questions of, of staff or of, of mid-state solid waste or waste management representatives. And at, if you feel like you're satisfied, you can make a formal recommendation that the board of directors would approve the assignment and authorize the execution of the agreement that would that would formalize that approval. Okay, thank you for the report. Any questions? Seems very straightforward to me. Um, yeah. 
Um, I have a few questions. So the franchise agreement technically expired in 2013 with an automatic extent, yearly extension come due July of every year. Is that correct? Yeah, it's it's true. Well, um, it, it was actually it was entered into in 2012 and it had a 10 year as a 10 year notice requirement. So every year, every July that passes, another year gets added on to it. If unless the district provides notice of of uh, termination. Is it just the district or both parties? No, our agreement is independent of the counties. And the county's agreement with, with waste with mid state is, is has a different structure uh, in that regard. So theoretically, come this July, mid state essentially would be like absolved of any liability. And then would we have to engage into a new where there's no longer an assignment of the franchise? No, so the way the agreement structured is if the if, if in the way this uh, this this agreement here is essentially waste management would inherit the the mid state agreement as it's drafted today. Inherit officially on November, on November first. Okay. So what what I guess what happens then in July because there's either an automatic extension or. So yeah, unless action's taken, yeah. it, in July it'll be extended for another year. Okay. So. You'd have until June to trigger that, and that would put that would trigger that ten year notice clause. Or if no action's taken, then it would it would it has sort of an evergreen provisions. But you get a notice is ten years. Yes. From so the so the the franchise agreement is I guess forever structured where um, waste management is an assignee and not the originator of the agreement. If there were ever an amend, if there was a need to amend, so let's say the approval takes place, the assignment takes place in in October, and on November first, waste management um, becomes the assignee and provides that service. If there were, if, I think it could, it could, it could live that way. But if there were an amendment necessary for for whatever reason, or sought by the district or waste management and approved by all parties for whatever reason, it probably makes sense to clean all that stuff up and make it between. Capital and CSD and waste management, but the agreement in it, in its current form already anticipated this assignment potential, and that's what this this agreement right here was intended to reflect. This um, this assignment to uh, assignment assumption agreement. So I know there's safeguards under section seven of the franchise agreement regarding rate adjustments, but I guess how does that all come into play with the with the 10 year extension? So let me just, let me just pull that up just real quick because um, our agreement is super clear in my in my view that the assignment clause does not open up a rate review. And it's just it's in black and white that in the case of assignment. Um, the assigning party shall not be entitled to request any adjustment based on the assignment. So that's that's crystal clear. I've discussed that with waste management. That that's just a that's right. no there's no room for interpretation for anything differently. That's that's the way it's written. Um, however, the the uh, the existing franchise agreement um, has uh, sections on on rates and how they're to be uh, interpreted. And uh, let me. Let me go back to the beginning of it. I don't have that hard copy. It's kind of a long agreement. Okay, so there's a, a, 
a specific provision dealing with rates, and um, this is how the, the this is how the rates have been adjusted since the agreement was 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 put into effect in 2012. Um, and so we wouldn't anticipate any changes, but those rate, those, those items that trigger rate adjustments um, include uh, their entitled to adjustment collection rates. If landfill costs provided the new landfill costs are competitive of other rates. So when landfill tipping fees at landfills go up, um, they can request a, a rate adjustment because of the, the increase in landfill costs. That requires a Prop 218 notice. So, so there's a process involved in the rate, rate approved. And Mid-State has requested land rate adjustments when landfill costs have gone up um, most of the years in the past 10 years. You know, there probably was a year or two that we held off and implemented them at a later date to comply with another uh, adjustment. Um, I can't remember specifically. Uh, uh, item number two here is a little bit uh, more ambiguous. Um, if there are new regulations, new laws, ordinances, or regulations that affect the services, the hauler or the franchisee is entitled to a rate review or a rate adjustment to um, implement those, meet those new requirements. We've done that on at, at least two occasions in the past 10 years with Mid-State. Most recently with the 1383 requirements, those rates took effect in July of 2022. So that, that's another provision that we, we have used. Uh, and then, um, Finally, this this provision F, the the franchise or the the yeah, the franchise is in franchise is entitled to uh, a CPI adjustment uh, under section F here um, each April, and this is this has been built into our Prop two eighteen adjustments for for a for a five year period. So last July, prior to approving the SB thirteen eighty three rates, we also included in the notification that the rates would would go up by the CPI for the following four years. As a Prop 218 limits those seats, those automatic adjust, adjustments to a period of five years. So the rates will continue to, to adjust based on CPI, could adjust based on uh, landfill costs, and could adjust based on new regulations. And um, those the, first, the the latter two require new Prop Two Eighteen notification requirements, and essentially it's, uh, evidence to show that the how the those costs uh, impact each of the services. So we last complied with that the last July, July two thousand twenty two, um, and I don't know when. I mean, the, the adjustments to landfill rates do have to occur, and they. You know, they could they could make their request at any time uh, after the, the rates go up at landfill at landfills for that one provision, and then it just depends on what regulations might come about uh, going forward. But the agreement was written to anticipate um, that condition. So waste management would be held to these same conditions uh, for for rates, uh, and it's really clear that just simply becoming the the, the assignee. It doesn't trigger a, a re review or a resetting of, of the rates. Uh, that being said, there's nothing that prevents the district and waste management for, uh, from revising or agreeing to revise this agreement to have new terms through an amendment that would deal with the rates, uh, you know, sort of differently. The, the way our agreement deals with them is different than the way the counties and most many of the other jurisdictions in the neighboring area do. I, I will say um, the the evergreen nature of the agreement uh, is a little bit unique um, in, in, in Templeton's case. Just for my own curiosity, so the adjustment regarding regulations that occurred in 2022, do those reflect the kind of push from the state towards recycling and sorting? And yes, they were, do they be, we worked with Midstay to develop what the anticipated costs were to implement 1383 and folded those into the rate calculations, which were reviewed by this committee and then ultimately by the board after a, a Prop 218 notice. So the in my view, the 1383 rates are in place and have been have, have been considered and are now in effect. Um, that being said, this is a, a changing environment and, and we don't know when the next new regulation may come down the line that that could 
further affect um, services or, or requirements of, of solid waste haulers. Thank you. Um, any comments, guys? Questions? You did a great job. I mean, covered it. Co covered it just exactly as I would have covered it. So, um, yeah. I mean, uh, to me, uh, it seems straightforward. Uh, I'm glad the consultant, uh, you know, the, the report was very promising. So I, that, that was nice to see. Um, I don't, yeah, I don't have any further questions or comments. So I guess our next step would be to just recommend uh, yeah, it, this to the board of directors. So um, I think we can be ready as soon as October 3rd to have this item on the board of directors agenda. I need to coordinate with, with Mid-State and, and Waste Management a little bit on the agreement just to make sure that there's no surprises. And I don't know when the county's gonna share their draft of the agreement. Um, with the parties, and we, I would like to continue to try to keep those aligned so there's just as little confusion as possible, and we can align. I mean, waste management has gone into this with some expectations about when they have to provide insurance, meet insurance requirements and permitting and things like that. And because the reality is, while there's two agreements um, that we're dealing with, operationally, it's not treated that way. It's one facility providing services in, in areas that are abut one another, and really operate more like one larger one. And so I want to, uh, I think, to, to ensure the, the most, um, the smoothest transition possible, we want to remain as coordinated as possible. And so uh, if, if provided there are no surprises there uh, and, and, and the parties are good with the way the draft agreement is structured and, and it's available now, um, we could get, we could have this on your board meeting of October 3rd, most likely October 3rd. The county is not going to have it before the County Board of Supervisors until October 17th. But I, I kind of made a commitment to Mid-State that we would be able to move a little faster in the county, and that's why I'm targeting our August, October 3rd. And I think it provides more certainty for, for Mid-State and, um, and for waste management. But if they would rather do it all, if they'd rather do it on October 17th, we can do that as well. All right. Sounds good. So we would, yeah. There, there, so this is an opportunity for the committee to um, formally recommend that the board of directors approve the assignment based on the information that was presented to you. Okay. And I think you could make it, you know, make that a kind of a little more formal um, recommendation. Okay. So you want us to vote on it? I have one more question before we go. Um, the the draft assignment and assumption agreement. Do we anticipate any major? edits or additions? To I don't think so. We're, we're going to present our um, recommendation based on the draft. But yeah, uh, I don't anticipate, I, I don't know of anything that's going to need to change, but I haven't circulated it back with the, I haven't looked at the, with the, with the again, the, this was based on the county's draft. I don't think anything's presented from the county to mid-state or waste no. management yet. Not till mid-state. Um, so um, I'd like I'd like to make sure that, again, the agreement that comes before you is not going to create any new hiccups or or, or challenges for this transaction um, that, would, that, that might come about. And we added some things to our draft that hasn't gone back to the county yet. And so just, and it's, that's why it's presented to you in draft form. So maybe if, you're, if the recommendation is based on the, the, the concept or the... Um, See, let me pull this back up. We can do a recommendation based on the draft as presented to yeah, us. Yeah, the draft, knowing that there, there could still be some more, um, there could still be some minor changes. I think anything that would come about would be relatively minor. And you need to bring that up, obviously, at the board. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we'll, we won't bring this, I won't bring this to the board unless it's, unless the other parties have, will, will, are prepared to execute it. Yeah. It won't do us any good. All right. Okay, then. So I just, I guess I'll make the recommendation for us to go ahead and to form forward to the uh, board of directors based on the draft. Okay. Let's agree. Move forward with the assignment and assumption agreement. Uh, I second. Okay. You want to take a full vote on that amongst the committee members? Pearson. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. We're all set. Get okay. to go one step closer. <laughs>
No, and, and appreciate, uh, especially Jeff's time, uh, we were able to, to meet and have some um, pretty blunt discussions about, you know, there, the, there are a lot of things that, that the state has asked the CSD to do, um, which obviously, you know, to, to your credit, you, you planned for uh, in, in the actions that were taken last year. I think Mid-State has done just an incredible job, uh, really makes it, uh, again, that much more desirable for us to want to serve uh, Templeton, that there's a great relationship here and a great community to serve. And uh, we are just excited about the opportunity. And uh, yeah, I can't wait for the the uh, official uh, approval, uh, again, with, with the board's um, blessing. And uh, certainly want to make ourselves available that between now and that meeting date, um, uh, whether it's the 3rd or, or uh, the 17th, that uh, if there are questions of, of WM, um, our contact information is included um, on that uh, that one sheet that was uh, brought up earlier by Jeff. Please feel free to reach out, phone call, email. Um, again, that, that we want this to be as uh, as easy a process as it can be, um, and that you have the knowledge that you need to be able to make a, a qualified decision. Awesome. Thank you. Appreciate it. All set. <clears throat> Next time. Sure. Okay. We're good, right? Yeah, good. Unless you want to hang around. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You have Melissa ask you, know, I hang Ah, uh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Some days I'd rather talk park and rec. I think that is. <laughs> Thank you. Thank oh, you. Guys. So fun. <laughs> is it okay off this side? Yeah, 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 you're good. Okay. Thank you. Hey, what's up, doing? Should we do that? Before they're we're, we're no, sometime on the road. Yeah. 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 They're gonna their intent is to continue to operate it. So it's gonna be right there for now. Huh? Yeah, it's gonna be right there. I think over time they'll make some yeah. operational changes, but that that, yeah. the, that asset is a big reason why they're interested in, in um, this franchise. Jeff, isn't it? Um the, the franchise agreement because it's an assignment, um is it mid state gonna be on the hook then until essentially a new franchise with directly with waste management, the way it's written. Because they're all at all times going to be the assigning. Yeah, I don't I don't know how their sale agreement deals with the, the but uh, with but our franchise agreement. Our our franchise agreement would the only thing that would that would change is that that assignment or that that three page agreement that you looked at. So um and that Unless somebody triggers that section three and just doesn't do the automatic extension. Right. And then essentially a new franchise agreement would have to be. But that would be 10 place. years down the road. It's already 10 years from. No, it's rolling. It's rolling. Yeah, it's a rolling 10 years. So it's a so it'd be 10 years. Every year it yes. renews for yeah, 10 years. What, yeah, so okay. we need to talk about it. Okay. Yeah, yeah we, that's. Okay. Yeah, we, but we need to get this through. All right. Second, um, all right, second item, parks condition and maintenance status. The gophers. <laughs> the bane of our existence. Okay, so yeah, uh, you this this item is, is a follow-up to your to your last meeting at the at the at your last um committee meeting. We discussed some challenges that we had with um with player safety and just uh uh low spots or trip hazards, things like that in the turf and and um what what our plan was to resolve that in the immediate term and in the long term. Um and so we were able to let's see um Justin put together kind of a short slide and so Justin I'll let you kind of walk through um this slide should right here. Uh -oh. Doesn't like your side <laughs> Yeah, so um, following our last uh, meeting, there were several several items brought up that were uh, important and priorities. One of those were a couple of those had to deal with safety and the usability of the fields. Um, and so we made uh, some efforts since our last meeting and so just wanted to update you all uh, with those efforts and you know get any feedback uh moving forward as well so um 
following our last parks uh, meeting, we ended up, um, I think this was right before the timing of it may have been like right before flag football mm -hmm. or just it was know, right around the start. Yeah. So we went out and spread um, uh, 40 cubic yards of a triple mix remix material um, it, uh, in some of those low spots where we had some significant damage due to gophers, what have you, erosion of some of the, the, the fields there kind of alleviate some of those issues with, with twisted angles and uh, springs and, or, or possibly alleviating something more serious. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, so, so we, we, um, you know, that we, we have a, a part-time park staff to accompany our full-time park staff presently. In addition to that, uh, you know, um, uh, one and a half employees, we also brought in our utility staff. And so they were doing a lot of the equipment, uh, the work. We had um, park staff absolutely in there with rakes and seed and spreading material and those sorts of things, which you may see from a couple of these photos. And this is a brief uh, PowerPoint, but it's just an example trying to, to show, communicate some of, the, some of the efforts out there to help out the safety issues and the, and the playability, usability of, of the field. So you just, this thing, you know, 40, this 40 cubic hard, it may be hard to, hard to envision, but that's a lot of material. It's a truck, uh, a truck and trailer, big transfer truck and transfer trailer times two for 40, it's 40 yards, about 20, about 10 yards per truck or trailer. So yeah. big, 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 uh, big uh, equipment uh, in June. So these are pictures from June. Not only did we do that in June, but we went back at it again. There, we didn't. We weren't able to get to uh, the entire, you know, the entire area in, in the beginning of June, early in June. So uh, we doubled down and did another forty cubic yards of material um, right before uh, soccer season here in 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 August, just to, really to help out, especially with soccer and that the um, the the. Um, uh, that usability of the fields and trying to keep away from from any kind of an injury. So we went into those areas where that really impacted by those gophers and especially those areas that we didn't get to in June. And we uh, spread out another uh, 40 yards. So a total of 80 yards of uh, 80 cubic yards, uh, four trucks and trailers, transfer trucks and trailers of uh, the triple mix um, material, seed, and those sorts of things spread out over those areas to try and help help things out. Um, are you seeing any growth, or are they just being destroyed by cleats? Or yeah. I mean, you know, soccer, they fix the parks, we destroy them. Yeah. So. <laughs> some some of the uh, some of the the vegetation will come back up through pretty quickly as yeah. we're irrigating and things are kind of recompacting. Some of that loose material that we we've, we've done our best to kind of spread out the staff have done their best to spread out and um place uh so but then um some of that that vegetation comes right back up through and in a short period of time you've got you know and seeds and those sorts of things are taking root ultimately i think and we'll get to kind of long range um plans as we develop our management plan for the parks uh things like sod and hydro seeding and seeding can take place. There's something that can be employed, but you know, some of those things impact the being able to use them for organized sports as use sports as well. So kind of kind of playing with with one of the, the challenges we had really even with this pretty uh this issue is the park has a lot of program uses with very short windows of downtime. And so there's you know, just really, again, um, in June, we had softball on those facilities up until like the second week of June. And then two weeks later, we have flag football starting. So just a couple of weeks where there wasn't a real intense use. And then uh, flag football ends, we had kind of the first half of August off, and then all of a sudden we're back into soccer practices and now games. And soccer is our most intense use at the park by far uh, with, what, 800? 830. 830. No, not they don't all play here, but the vast majority do. Um, so um, those are.
those windows make it difficult to do uh, heavy maintenance because we're unable to kind of take fields out of out of play during those program times. We're going to run in, in November after soccer season ends. Um, even though our program stops, all the all-star teams use this facility exclusively, really, because lighting uh, for for practice. Uh, so it's it's difficult to, to take the, the fields out of service long enough to do anything that's super significant uh, without you know without having to alter the the plant uses at the park. Um, uh, sh short term goals we set out to to deal with some of those safety items and the the usability of the fields, and, and we did that by we we were contracting out with Apex Pest Management for Gopher those sorts of things. We were doing some of that as well. We were doing some of that as well. And so then, um, you know, and then applying some of this this triple mix material to some of those sunken low low areas, um, just areas that weren't, you know, necessary, that we could better by putting some of that material in there, filling it in and making it a little bit smoother for, for uh, the kids using the fields. And then, um, uh, doubling down on really keeping track of monitoring and controlling our irrigation as well has been a really key uh, plays a big part in in the, in the health of those fields and and so even this photo is taking off earlier in the year where we were after our parks meeting we really were investing more time in that monitoring and controlling the irrigation out in these in these um, park areas all, all together in addition above and beyond like the park uh, full time one and a half staffs that we have out in parks. We spent an additional 120 hours approximately of utility staff in the parks being able to spread this material and just make some uh, improvements. Um, then the next slide, this is uh, kind of, you know, looking down the road and this is more, uh, you know, ongoing long-term management plan for the, the parks and, and the fields we'll be doing um, we were really excited. We're blessed with a piece of equipment that we can do some work with that parks tractor, right? Can't say that enough. Really happy about that. Another, with a number of things, the robot. But we'll get. I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to jump ahead. You're going to do the robot. Really excited. Really excited. So, uh, but so then be able to use that equipment and and do some of the the the, the norms, the best management practices uh, in in the fields is going to be, uh, you know fundamental to to keeping those uh, fields as best maintained as we possibly can and that's what we want to we want to do we want to we're committed to so we're going to be following through with all of these and implementing these uh these items and these elements and um and making them making them yeah I don't know if back. we're still going back and painting everything uh on that were you looking at painting no well okay no, it was okay bad. i thought we were going to put a uh, Put something around that. Yeah, we did. See this lower bar here? Oh, okay. it's hard to see because it's the same color as the grass. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. The, the, we just had a safety issue come up. This, this, this is actually not an average bar. Just for 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 oh, okay. okay. This, this is at at German Park. Okay. This is a drainage inlet here, yeah. and this has been around for a long time. But this is kind of a hillside. It's kind of hard to tell. It's a little slope here, and there, there's railing. This this railing existed, but there was a concern that there was a kind of a large opening and someone could actually still kind of fall through the bottom okay. so our, our staff came in welded in additional I see. Uh, okay so it, yeah, it's kind of hard to see because it's like it's, <laughs> it's, it's, that's just the grass <laughs> i was gonna say what that was <laughs> i know there was like some issue or delay in figuring out the irrigation technology has that now been resolved or do you feel yeah. confident with that yeah it, absolutely one of the things that have set, set us back uh has been this this turnover of staff. And so with, uh, you know, we've had our park staff now, our full-time staff has been on since uh, November, December, December, beginning of December. So, um, so continue investment in, in, uh, in his success. Yeah, 2022 was a really rough year in parks maintenance. You know, we, we had a, uh, we had an employee who had been here a while, uh, uh, retired at the beginning of the year. We had, so then we, um, when we ever we have that sort of gap, we had a utility crew that could vary going out to take care of parks. And then we brought on a new full-time person. Unfortunately, he didn't last but about four or five months. Then the same situation happened again. 
uh, where we have to send out utility operators to take care of the, the, the parks. And then uh, we're able to hire another maintenance worker in December. So really in 2022, we had more like five different primary people at the parks. And I think that that was a, a contributing factor to some of our challenges. Thank you very much. I mean, you guys saw the problem and went, went at it. And we really appreciate it. And you know, everyone come together to do this with our yeah, news, on, so that's ongoing, uh, ongoing. So, so, so uh, we really appreciate any feedback from uh, some of the associations. Uh, that they have, uh, you know, feedback really uh, helps us out. Input from the community can uh, steer us in a particular direction. So uh, appreciate that input and feedback as, as well. Yes, yes, and you know, I, I think having extra staff now yeah. helps to give you additional. So thank you. Any questions, comments? It's too bad there aren't enough facilities to rotate downtime for each one. So you can yeah. really focus on it, but it doesn't exist. So yeah. which can yeah, I know park space, uh, excuse me, park space, specifically grass space is an issue in the county. Yeah. So everybody's looking for somewhere to play. Yeah. So that's a good thing. Yeah. And it's and it's not specific to Templeton. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Politicians <laughs> Thank you so much. I will say we did just have a, a soccer meeting last week and um, there's a new member and unfortunately I didn't get my hands on the picture, but um, she was saying, it's Lindsay Lopez. She's the principal actually out at Creston Elementary. Um, and she was saying that she was looking at pictures of her kid from last year to this year at opening day. Cause she does, you know, we do the classic pictures of first day of games. Um, she just took a picture and she could, she was looking at them and she said she could tell there was an obvious improvement from last year to this year on the same day same time so okay which is good to hear it's always good to hear so she's got picture proof asked for proof but <laughs> <laughs> you know one, well, one, at Crescent elementary she's rather busy and did not get it to me so <laughs> and one, one of the other things that that we've been fortunate with is we're coming off this sort of wet year and so we're not being as we're not as concerned about you know irrigation and yeah and, and during those really dry periods that was a struggle we were really just like okay just keep it alive yeah you know uh cut, cut the water yeah. to the extent that we can and and uh coming off this really wet year that's been less of a concern and that that's not not been a um not been a hurdle unfortunately hopefully it won't be again i hear it's going to be another wet year so we'll see yeah. Uh, all right, next item, trees at Everest Park. So staff will present to the committee plan, uh, plans for the trees at Everest Park that are recommended for removal, replacement, and may make a recommendation to the board. So you may remember we, we discussed this as well a, a couple of months ago. We, we had an issue uh, or complaint raised by the adjoining property owner that I brought to your attention. Uh, the, the owner of the mini storage that backs up to the, the backs up to Everest Park. And that the 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 eucalyptus trees were uh, messy and causing a maintenance concern for him, and requested that we, you know, prune or remove those trees. Um, and we brought we brought that information to you, and you suggest you asked for a sort of a, a more specific plan with a budget about the trees. And so, so um, Justin's been able to pull this information together over the past uh, couple of months, and. Um, uh, we wanted to kind of kind of walk you through that. And I don't have this. So these are these are the slides that were included in your packet. These are the trees that I'm that, that we were initially speaking about. Uh, these these this is the you know the ever just to orient you. This is the the I guess that's the southern the well the, this is the north western corner of the parking lot. Um, so the driveway comes in if you were not in this picture, but I'm using, look at this picture if you were to drive in and turn immediately left, which you shouldn't do because there's arrows on the ground pointing you to the other direction, but not all people follow those arrows. Um, then th these trees would be on your left. Uh, these are the trees that are, this is the mini storage and there's, you know, the trees just are, are kind of messy. And then you might remember at the, the same meeting, we got some complaints even from our softball you parents or coaches about just the messiness of the trees and then just our general uh, observation of, in terms of the leaf and debris mess that the trees cause and the maintenance headaches associated with those. So these are the trees we're, uh, 
we're kind of talking about. This is this is the entry right here, by the way, off, right off of Gibson. Um, this first tree that you see here is on Ashley Heim's property. It's it's behind the fence, not not that's why it said not included. It's not our tree, not our concern. And these these trees, uh, you know, obviously were. And then Justin took this picture, which is really this is coming. This is taken from the sort of the far end of the park or um, down near the second softball field. Um, and you can see these are the trees that we looked at in the last photograph. And then these trees kind of continue, uh, you know, down. Um, so you looked at all this information back. This is a different photograph, but the, these same trees are still the same. Um, and uh, I think this is the new information that that we were able to compile um, that we didn't have for you last time. This is a uh, like a, a, a scan of part of the um, the improvement project uh, area of of construction. So this this little like this little dash line indicates sort of the the area where there's going to be improvements in the park. So we we highlighted this because some of those improvements, um, for example, the um, this sidewalk right here that's that's shown. This does not exist. This is this is to be added. When it gets added, a retaining wall needs to be built right here. That's this dark line. And when that occurs, a number of the trees that are here have to be removed as part of that project. So you can see those, those in, they're, they're marked in X's here. Um, the same thing occurs over, over here. This is the, the about half of the playground area, the southern half of the playground area. And you can see here that there are a couple of trees, eucalyptus trees that are proposed for removal um, because they interfere with the proposed playground. And so what we want, since we're already really moving forward as much as possible with the improvement project, we didn't want to interfere with the plans and specs that were already developed. We were, we're, we're having enough challenges as it is getting these things approved by the county and we didn't want to throw another curveball to MIG our consultant on this project so we focused our we're focusing our discussion and proposal today on the the trees that would remain on would, would not be touched as a part of the project so the project proposes to remove um, some trees and replant these are these newer trees that are shown here are uh, are new trees, not eucalyptus trees. I think they're holly oaks. Holly oaks. And remove a couple of eucalyptus in this area, and then just simply removal of these eucalyptus trees that are real close to the playground. So we're focused on the stuff in the middle as a, as a separate district initiated thing that's separate from the the larger project that will require some communication with Ashley Ivan if this does move forward. By the way, um, and so this this picture that that just this picture in there's there's a lot going on here actually uh, um and so what, what what we're attempting to show is the the tree from the same vantage point so this is the same vantage point that we looked at earlier these trees here on the left um are would be removed or replaced as a part of the Everest Park Improvement Project these trees on the far right that are are what is that kind of blurred out a little bit or yeah. patched or something those would be removed as part of the project, but not replaced. Um, and then the stuff in yellow is what uh, what we're discussing today is a district project separate, maybe sooner than the, the other project. These trees here would be proposed to be uh, removed in their entirety and then re replanted with the with, uh, same type of tree that the project comes in. Yeah. Uh, so a, a holly oak uh, tree. These trees uh, here would be pruned. That's correct, to 50%. And then this tree here uh, would be removed because when we look at this map, that's this same tree here, we felt that it still remains too close to this playground area. And so leaves and debris that that tree would be shedding is gonna become a, a would, would remain a kind of a maintenance headache. And so we would propose as part of this project to go ahead and just remove this eucalyptus tree as well and not replant it um, for that reason. Um, and then uh, just kind of using the pr pr prior quotes or, or bid, quote that we got, we think that the tree removal cost is about 
15 grand. The tree pruning cost is about 5,000. Uh, the tree replacement uh, to replant, do some irrigation extension, replant trees with stakes, about a thousand bucks for a total of about 21,000 bucks. Because this isn't a bid project and um, uh, we, we built a, we wanted to have a little contingency. So all told, we think we can get all this done for about $25,200, you know, rough numbers. Um, we do not have a budget for that work as it stands today. So a budget amendment would be necessary to proceed with this proposed, proposed work. So maybe maybe I'll, I'll just slide back up here. Do you, is there yeah? Are there any questions, or do you agree with the proposed? Um, why move forward with pruning instead of completely replacing to align with the rest of the? I think it's an alternative. That that is an alternative. Um, I think there were, we we thought there was some interest in, on the committee's part to retaining. Uh, trees that were not in the way um, for various reasons, but it probably wouldn't cost much. We're talking about these. Just the ones I think are proposed for pruning. Yeah, which is shown like, like this center yeah. here. So I, mean, I think the goal is also to kind of address other issues as the, the leaves and kind of the nuances that it's causing. So if we're already going in there, why not replace them all to a more sufficient yeah yeah i mean i think that would be our preference would be to eliminate the yeah the eucalyptus trees are just they're just they're hazardous they're not a great tree for this they're location. not great for parks correct i know my concern before was if we're removing trees i'd like to see replacement in there but if we're going to prune significantly anyway at that point why not just replant what's or plant something new in association with what we're already planting so we so we would those ones that are planned in this in this for a fifty percent reduction we would just as we're removing as we're removing the uh, eucalyptus to the left we would just kind of extend that further down and keep that same consistent planting of holly oaks it's a it's a combination of a of a deer grass which is just kind of like a mounded yeah, you know gra now. grass with with those with those holly oaks which I love they're really beautiful compact slow moderately growing little oak trees were really cool so essentially it would take up the same yeah. space because you're removing that for this one to the i guess my right that's in yellow yeah. that one's being completely removed right. so if you replace the pruned ones with the new plant essentially that's going to expand and take up yes. those spaces so yeah. we're we're replacing what we're taking out also found out that the in that we were gonna we were gonna spread the eucalyptus chippings some of the some of the, though in the wood the wood the chipping the chipping material the wood okay <laughs> but just for the just for the sake of it we found out that there was some lasting uh, mosquito abatement of, of some kind in those oils and then in the in in the wood that they would be able to you know if there was concern if there was interest in keeping insects certain insects away that that mosquito does just saying it just throwing it out there. There is, it lasts for some period of time. The chipping, the chip, just the chips. I'm just talking about the chips. I don't know if it's good for the soil. Right? Um, it's um, yeah. because of, yeah, some of the stuff because that it has. Yeah, yeah. it's just, the tree, the tree aren't going to yeah. do well. Gotcha. Well, I think oak has kind of a natural insect repellent in it too, right? Uh, to yeah, an extent. I'm reading a I, little bit about I was reading about tea trees and all yeah. kinds of stuff that have different insect repellents. But so I know mosquitoes is yeah. are a big problem so, at Everett. So you're saying basically they kind of all the I mean might as well if we're gonna do it my might, might as well just kind of come in and and we're already creating the extra space by completely yeah. removing that last yeah, I'm, yeah I'm so how how much more Justin if the price was five yeah. grand to to to, to prune how much would it be to remove this tree in lieu of pruning? And we'd have to budget a little bit more for a replacement. Yeah, those ones right there that were going to be pruned to 50%, they're larger, they're larger use. Um, okay. Yeah, it's going to be, what it's, it's, it's going to increase the planting, the, you know, the number of plantings that we do, the extending of the drip and those sorts of right, things. Right. That, that's not going to be the bulk of the extra cost. It's, it's, the, it's the removal down to, um, 
you know, down to ground, you know, as a part of these, we were just getting ballparks, just right. ideas of what, okay, so we haven't gone out for well, the exact right. spec, yeah, scoped uh, estimate. But the idea was that they were going to remove these trees. The ones that they were going to move down to ground, they were going to leave the large wood. That would be for us to, to take off site. And then they were going to chip right there on this on the spot. They were going to leave the chips. They were going to chip all the wood, brush, and leave it there on the site. So we could work out some of those details. It was, it was uh, you know, those bigger, those bigger uh, ukes that are behind that's kind of like a trailer. It's it's north of the RV. I'm sorry, north of the storage facility is an RV dealer. Those larger ukes that are behind there, um, to prune them all was twelve thousand, and to remove them all the way down to the ground was eighteen thousand. That's six thousand dollars. So fifty percent more. But we're we're but then some of those trees, two of those trees are included in the phase one improvements, so that would have to be you know taken out. So, uh, uh you know. Yeah, five thousand dollars more. Maybe, maybe that is what it's going, going so to so be. So maybe we need to say, I mean, just just ballparking it. This is yeah. maybe like thirty thousand bucks. Yeah, is that is that thirty thousand bucks? Remove all the eucalyptus that that is not part of the project, and replace with these holly oaks. Um, um, You're removing four, but only replacing. Well, there's actually there's more than enough. there's there's more than four trees here. Oh, okay. All of these dots are trees. Oh, okay. Let's see. And Jeff, going back to the quote, it, it, it looks like the original the original quote was to remove all of the units down right. the ground was thirty two thousand dollars, and and phase one improvements already include the at least five, yeah, of the ukes like along the third parking lot, and then two at the very end where that new playground is going to be located. So you're taking seven trees out of that out of that proposal. Yeah, so it's about about forty percent of the trees are. are dealt with in another way yeah so um okay so it's so about thirty thousand dollars for complete removal and replanting um is, is that the i think would that be a recommendation and should we move forward with a and bring forward a budget amendment to cons consider this yeah i'm good with that yeah. I like that's it. most sufficient way to it would look really clean and consistent yeah. and consistent yeah with, it would actually solve the problem of yeah. The yeah, shedding and all the other stuff. Yeah, and then we'll communicate. So after, if this goes, if like it goes before the board, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll communicate with Ashley Heim about the that we're taking care of these trees, and these trees are are, are going to be taken care of as part of this project. Are, are you going to be able to get an estimate then before it comes to the board? Yeah, following well, following it would be. We, we we wouldn't get quotes until we have authority to 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 yeah, to, to bid the work. It's 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 it's, it's very time. These estimates are. Okay. Very time consuming, so we don't want to jerk around the, the 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 contractors either. They don't like they don't like doing this just for information. It's fair. Yeah. Um, Although we'll is there, is there room in the budget to undertake this type of project? Or um, yes, yes. I mean, we'll, we'll we can outline the impacts <laughs> of that. We can outline the impacts of it uh, when when it comes back before the board in terms of what does that lead and and whatnot. I mean, it, it's not an annual expense, so that's less. It's less concerning. Um, so we, we have funds available, uh, but it is still a big. It's still a big undertaking you know, for for in the you know this fund of thirty thousand dollars. A new expense is is, right. is material. What um, are you going to see a reduction in in maintenance costs then if we implement these new trees? Is there is you know, there so so I, I'd say you know in the long term I think so. So one of the things about this. So, so right now, this is just turf, and it kind of runs to a point where there's like a little bit of a downslope into kind of a drainage swale. Uh, the turf just sort of ends. There's no defined, there's no uh, defined ending. And turf ends, there's like a, a downslope into a drainage swale. Then you hit this upslope where there's some vegetation and these trees. Well, this project that we're, that we're going to keep talking about includes a walkway that goes around this here. And that was going to be basically at the edge of the turf, or kind of you know the the the, the where the turf ends kind of today. That's where when the project's done, if we continue to have these um, eucalyptus trees, we would absolutely have more maintenance by constantly removing them off the concrete, off the the walkway, because this is kind of 
all these leaves end up right in this low lying area right here. It gets dangerous too, right? The oil and everything gets on the concrete, gets slippery. So yeah. The leaves get yeah. wet. And, yeah. and these eucalyptus leaves drop Nothing. continuously. They're known for self pruning. They'll just drop yeah. a lip. They'll just. And then, yeah, the limbs come down. And... Yeah, and the holly oak, I mean, so there's coastal live oak already in the parking lot, and there's some London plain. London plain is deciduous, live, live oak is uh, evergreen, but the holly oak is evergreen. It's got an entirely different leaf. It's it's a very nice, it's a pleasant tree and it's moderate, it's slow growing. And so then it will be um, a low maintenance, especially if you're comparing to a, to a 60, 80 foot eucalyptus multi-trunk. It's just a totally different yeah, so we'll, we'll, you know, the, obviously the new trees that are going to go in are going to be much smaller scale and take a long time to get, they, they will never grow this tall. Um, they grow up like out yeah. more than up. Yeah, right? they're like a 25 foot tall at the end, at the end, and it takes them years to get, to get that big. Yeah, they are, their, their skirt, their shape of their, the, the tree is a more kind of grow up and then out instead of being so incredibly are there concerns of inviting new types of critters with this type of tree? Not, or? not that I know of. There's no like a, sometimes even like a mulberry tree might have these little these little berries that invite possums or like, or some kind of an animal in to eat these different fruits and those sorts of things with the seeds. And with holly oaks, they're, uh, they're not I think they, they, they are very small. They're very different than the coastal live oak that's already in the parking lot. There's already live oak in the parking lot. The, Holly oak is is very small. I, I can't imagine that it would encourage, discourage any any, you know, any, any little. Like There's very very very, very tiny. The coastal uh, live oaks, if there was something that was going to attract, I think by their acorn, it would be the coastal live oak. If anything, those. Are cool. What we need are things that are going to eat gophers. Well, yeah. uh, owls. Owl boxes. Owls. <laughs> no, owls not somewhere. Okay, so no no you chips and then no uh, no all right promise is learning a lot here apparently humans can eat the uh acorn nut oh yeah no. it's edible oh, for yeah. humans yeah. so we're good with this so yeah. we'll report on the uh okay. holly oak tree right. for you so all right, so we'll go ahead. So we this one is uh, decided. So we we'll go ahead to the next item is the Everest Park Improvement Plans. Yeah, we just want to provide a verbal update to you about. Oh, okay. yeah. do, we a, do we need a formal recommendation? For oh yeah, it'd be, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I thought we have this thirty thousand dollar. Is there consensus on a thirty thousand dollar yeah. budget amendment to to remove and replant? Yeah, in the non affected the, areas. Okay. I'm less. I'm less. <laughs> I don't think so. As long as, as long as none of you are going to say that's not what the, the committee wanted to do. Um, oh, you're good. Okay. This this no, she's sorry. I think that's all. I want. Okay. All right. So that improves okay. Everest Park. Yeah. So um, we just want to keep this on on your radar. Um, you'll we've had some challenges with this uh, this project. Um, it was formally submitted about a year ago to the county uh, for a uh, for approval uh, permit. A per, a, the, our goal was to have plans that were approvable, permittable. I mean, use that word permittable, so that we could then go out to bid, hire a contractor, and go. Um, we got back over the uh, probably February. Uh, I could be wrong. Somewhere around there. Um, comments from the county, which were extensive, like 30 pages of comments on the draft plans. And we, so we asked MIG to begin to address those comments. And uh, by about May, they said they, I think we were, we thought we were about, we had them addressed. And uh, we asked our district engineer to kind of review all of this, all of the comments from the county and all of MIG's responses and changes to concur that they met all the requirements because once they go back to the county, they could just sit for months and months and months before we hear back. Um, so in doing so, we ran into kind of a one, uh, ran into kind of one material hiccup and that, deal, that deals with the stormwater 
uh, issues. The park is, is dual purpose, right? It's a stormwater basin as well as a public park. And the county raised the issue that the improvements to the, to the park could negatively affect stormwater quality. And how is the, how is the plans addressing that? And the plan doesn't address that. There's no, it just, it, just, it doesn't address stormwater in any way. So um, the county and the, and our district engineer team at Meyer were, were working together to come up with a, a solution. And we thought we'd have, we thought the county would share one with us by the end of August, but we, we haven't received that yet. And Tina's on vacation right now. And, and when she returns, it's my goal to, okay, if, if we're not getting any help from the county, we need to figure out, figure this out on our own. Quite frankly, she thought it might require some sort of additional filtration or some other component that we've not prepared for uh, that, that would address stormwater quality. And I, I don't have a good sense of what, what that entails at the moment. How does it affect the quality? I mean, what, we're not adding anything that would- More hard services. And that affects the quality of the water. Again, I, I'm, I'm not the right, I'm, I'm probably not, I'm not, I've not been directly involved in the, in this issue with the county. It's a it's a state water board regulation because it is a stormwater basin. And so, yeah, any additional paint or hard surfaces create additional runoff. Yeah, so, but yeah, but the quality and actually would be better because you're not, you don't have all the junk in there. But the volume increases. That's what we probably need to Yeah, it's a, it's a um, so, I, I don't want to natural surface to absorb. Yeah, so I don't know. Um, I, as of right now, I don't know what that might be or what that might entail. But that's a it's a hiccup that we need to resolve before we resubmit, because otherwise it'll just go there, and then seven or eight months later we're going to get comments back, and it's still not going to be addressed. Um, secondly, and more recently, uh, we got comments back from County Public Works about the um, encroachment permit. permit. You might recall the project, and you can kind of see it on that last uh, uh, slide a little bit. When we we had to we had to go back and, and redesign the entry because the county rejected the ADA accessibility plans, so that required an ADA accessible walkway from the public right of way. Well, that the right of way um, includes the sidewalk, and so so where that walkway intersects the sidewalk on Gibson, uh, ADA compliant her ramp or flat landing area was designed into the plan to accommodate that ADA requirement. Well, that encroaches on or touches another drive apron on Gibson. And what the County Public Works has said is, now you're affecting a drive apron on Gibson Street. It's existing, been there for 40 years, that the drive apron doesn't serve a purpose. There's a, a, drive, a driveway apron that goes into a fence. It, it was... <coughs> My, or my, my guesstimation was it was built when the sidewalk was first poured in anticipation of that there being a driveway there. There never has been a driveway there. So there's a drive apron or a, you know, um, a driveway approach that's constructed, been that way for years and years. The county now says because you're, you're close to that, you've got to rip that out and extend the, drive, and extend the, uh, the driveway or replace that section of the driveway. So it's about a 60 foot section of concrete We've sent that back to our to MIG. They're already saying that the scope of work didn't include any offsite improvements. I don't think there's going to be a way around this. Um, you know, we're you know we're probably going to have to amend our contract with MIG, design a. Uh, all, it's not complicated, but it is more concrete work, uh, and put in um, replace that drive apron with a regular sidewalk. It will improve ADA accessibility because none of those drive aprons that were built back then meet today's ADA standards. They, if you can, any older sidewalk, you know, when you walk, when you when you go, when you're walking on the sidewalk and you come to a driveway, there's kind of a steep little drop off, so the the, the car can pass through. And kind of a steep little incline. Well, none of those meet the modern ADA standards. They're too way too steep, even though they're only you know a foot long would ordinarily be responsible for stuff like that in if we weren't doing this work it would never be done it would just remain the way it is or the county at some point could undertake a ada improvement there but um it, it wouldn't be triggered except for development is there any way we could get grants and things like that because we're doing ADA work on well that's something we've examined and melissa can tell you 
we've, 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 for several years now, we've, um, so ADA improvements are technically uh, an eligible activity to use CDBG funds for, mm -hmm. community development block grants. Mm -hmm. um, we are not a CDBG direct recipient. The county is, in our case, we're not a city. So for years now, we've kind of targeted, could, can our project, because this was really a lot of, half of this work was like ADA, right? Accessibility at the park. Um, and it, the, in, in theory, at least some of the work would be, um, would be funded by CDBG. But the county has made homeless, homeless services um, the CDBG priority year after year after year. And so it has kept other projects from from becoming um, uh, desirable at the county level. We would have to essentially compete with the, or we would have to ask the county assign some of its CDBG funds to our project as an eligible uh, project. But again, the county has said no. The, the, they do a, a needs assessment every year or a, as a, what's the name of that? Workshop or for process CBDG yeah CDBG workshop yeah that's a needs assessment yeah. for the county and uh, cities yeah and, and, and they've just continued to identify home Homes housing housing and crisis as as the only as the top and only priority and so their CDBG funds are going there not to other projects even though this would meet the definition this would be eligible but it's not our call it's not it's not something that that we control um, so. Um, I, I don't think this this sidewalk issue. I think it's it's a it's a it's a hassle. It's going to cost us a little bit more money to have a design. It's certainly going to cost us something to do the work. You know, ten not hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, you know, of additional work, but it it's you know unfortunate that's come up this late in the game because um, our all of our prior bid estimates don't include the work, but I don't think we're going to get over. I mean, the county, the county, basically, they look for every opportunity to require a private party. They look at us as a private party, like a, like like we were a private developer, to do these public improvements. And so it, it yeah, uh, that's long as cost. The obvious. Uh, so based on what was budgeted versus where we are now with this project, what what is the difference in costs there? You know what? We don't have a new cost estimate. I mean, the last time we got a cost estimate from MIG it was, you know, it was going to use up the resources that we had available um, uh, for it. And the, but at the time, um, it was really difficult to predict uh, construction costs. You know, during kind of that second year of COVID, there was a lot of challenges with get, getting materials, and it was. Uh, I, I guess my bigger concern is just how accurate are those cost estimates? We won't know whether we can afford this until we get bids, not estimates but but actual bids on the, on the it project seemed at this point the cost of um, material and all of these delays have added probably substantial to what was yeah well i don't know allocated. you know there, there's there was some thought that the actual cost cost of construction went down uh, after 2021 2021 would have been like the worst year to do it um so uh, but i don't know if if, if we're continuing to ramp back up or not yeah, so so we but I mean with any project longer you delay more likely it gets more expensive. It gets more expensive. Well, we know the ADA ramp was was substantial additional cost. But there was no basically the county said unless you're gonna put the walkway in, you're done. You, you know you can't do any of this work. No playground, no nothing. Excuse me, I have another commitment, so I need to leave. But thank you for all the information total agreement so far. I'm hoping to hear about the uh, your fundraiser be part of that later yeah. on. So Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Well, the bigger concern is that there's more of an unknown. The sidewalk thing is fixable, right? There's it, it's not a super challenging problem. It's going to add cost, and and I'm sure MIG is not happy about it. Um, are there other like federal grants or anything that we can seek in trying to make ADA? Well, that's what CDBG is: is federal funds. We can nonprofit groups that are dedicated to ADA compliance. I've looked into it in the past. I haven't seen anything that sort of jumps out at me, right? 
Um, but I can I can do some more research and, and see if there's other mechanisms or like you said, private rather than you know federal or see what what we can get creative with. It's really a shame that we're at a real disadvantage. It used to be the go to hostage, yeah. CB C B D uh well for cities it is absolutely yeah, if we were a city we would absolutely have access to these funds, we would just prioritize them. But um but the county has prioritized, you know, housing crisis and the unsheltered as their you know number one goal for C B G grants. So I think for that for money is so our part that I'll think is over. <laughs> I mean, well, I think the thing that's going towards housing the homeless, yeah. but we do, and they too. I think that they, 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 they are housing. <laughs> yeah, but how are they defining housing? Um, so the the storm the, the the actual stormwater quality issue is a bigger concern of mine. This sidewalk because because we don't know yet what the solution is. Maybe it's not a big deal. Maybe you know I, I just don't I just don't have my my head wrapped around that issue uh, right now. Hope to, hoping to learn more over the next couple of weeks and come up with a plan to move forward and we can keep you posted. Um, and uh, we're in, we're, we were in communica communication daily with MIG on, on, on changes like yeah, you know, just reached out yesterday. Out. And, yeah, so. Is there going to be enough time to work with Tina before her retirement to address? Because that's a pretty it, quick. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think we'll probably, if, if we can't have, if we don't have, uh, Tina didn't have the solution. She was really kind of put in contact with the county who had committed to helping us come up with one and we have to hire like a third party we might need to get involved with a stormwater specialist or someone who can help us interpret these regulations and, and come up with a solution um because because quite frankly we're not changing the part all that much uh it, it's you know we're not taking away stormwater retention capacity or those kinds of things so um is that it? That's it. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you. All right. Fundraising efforts. All right. This is me. We're not going to be doing Live in the Dream. I think some of this was in your board packet from uh, the meeting last night. Uh, we are not going to be doing the Volunteer Wars Live in the Dream this year. Uh, the event kind of snuck up on us uh, with a lot of staffing adjustments that have been happening. Uh, so rather than that, we're shifting to a series of drive-through dinners uh, that will hopefully raise a decently significant amount of funds with a lot less staff time and, and energy required uh, since we're sort of being pulled in several different directions these days. Uh, so the first one happens on September, uh, excuse me, October 17th on Tuesday. So uh, we've already sold a couple tickets, which is fantastic. It was just put it on Facebook yesterday as a marketing. Um, highly suggest you get it. It's going to be pretty good food. It's Chef Andre, uh, who was at the concerts in the park this year, selling those pizzas, the, the pizza for concerts. Um, so we're hopeful that we can sell. Uh, our target, I believe, is 150, 150 meals, but I think we can, we can beat that. So... Um, Give your option of, of what you'd like to get, and everybody gets some salad and some dessert to go with it. Uh, the drive through will happen uh, at the rec department, so it's uh, the, the rec department parking lot, uh, so it's super simple for us to help provide. I think we might have a couple of rec foundation members and a couple other sports board members come out and help facilitate. It should be nice and easy. Uh, so get your tickets. Give us a call, put us down. Uh, you can get tickets by calling us or coming by with so, so on that eighty dollars, how much do you think that, uh, that would go towards the we get forty dollars for every meal. Forty dollars for every yeah, meal. so um so for me, okay, so up to eighty you get. Oh the exactly. And then exactly. you guys only offering meals for four, you don't have for two people or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, no, it's all standardized meal size. So meal feeds a family of four. Nothing wrong with leftovers. You can make two meals out of it. There's only two of them. So yeah, we're super excited. We're, the first one will be October 17. We're looking at another one in, I think, January, February um, to, to do a, a bit of a series. Um, there's a few other drive through dinners in town that are pretty standard. FFA does like a tri-tip dinner. Um, culture, the high school cultural initiative 
is doing one. So we want to make sure that we're not doing them at the same time as others. Uh, so we have a couple on the books, so and they'll be a good time. I was wondering, uh, when we did the budget, uh, how much should that be put in them for? Uh, was it 35000 or something? Um, somewhere along the line. It was around thirty five. Yeah. yeah. So that will come to maybe... We, so we're we'll doing a goal. number of these, right? Yeah, so like five we're or doing six, several seven. of them. Yeah, it, it, I guess it depends on how many, you know, if, if, if we sold 200 tickets, let's just say that that's not a, that's not an outrageous number. That might be an aggressive number, but not outrageous. You'd, we'd make uh, eight grand. Yeah. So we'd have to do like four yeah. to, to, to match the net income of living the dream. Well, last year was, was that last year? That was like 70,000? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's part of it, though, is when we've held them back to back, the the one year one is significant, year two is significantly smaller. Yeah. Uh, so the idea is like hold off to it or maybe. Maybe look at doing it every other year because it takes a lot of work to put that on. Um, and doing it every other year might sort of generate that community excitement also. Uh, so it doesn't become a stagnant um, event. Uh, so we want to really promote it as like, you know, kind of a big deal. So you know, biannual might be more profitable. It is a, it is a tremendous effort. And um, oh yeah, I'm not sure we ever had the you know the the recipe down just right in terms of what it took to. It's put not people. really a sustainable effort. <laughs> <clears throat> well, thank you for you know. I mean, yeah. always thinking out of box, so we appreciate that. You know, Absolutely. when <laughs> when the closes, no, I appreciate that. All right. Um, okay. The next item: letter of support request for Templeton Park Place structure. Okay, so this uh, uh, um, this request came uh, actually came from Kalud from Templeton Recreation Foundation, um, and so maybe you can you want to introduce it, and I can bring up the pictures that you sent me. Sure. Um, so basically, uh, earlier um, in, in the month or so, the Templeton Rec Foundation decided to take on a project of uh, advocacy as well as fundraising to um, basically either renovate or replace our place structure here at Templeton Park. Um, property taxes and whatnot, it's a county responsibility and it's a, a place structure that's over 25 years old. Uh, so we kind of, within our mission statement of supporting parks and recs at Templeton, have decided to pursue uh, the, the county in, in, in encouraging them to incorporate money to, to go towards this the play structure in, in particular. And so what we committed to do um, was to visit organizations and, and committees and, and districts within our, our district here in Templeton and just gather support to show that this is a community um, passion project and that you know the county really needs to make our park a priority and, and dedicate some of the funds that were already technically supposed to be going to um, parks um, and dedicate some of that funding to for them. So, the, so what we've asked is basically just at this point, just a letter of support um, from the district, essentially saying that yes, you know, we stand by this. Um, this is a need of our of our of our community. Uh, the this is kind of a heart and center of our town. Obviously, you know, we're adjacent to the park here, and the district, I think, in the past has contributed to. Um, renovations of this park, the this place structure in particular. So, but we're not asking for money at this. Point. We're just asking for a letter of recommendation. <laughs> so the place structure, I mean, uh, there's some elements that are just kind of closed because they're right. not operable. Like here's a here's a photo, and, and so you gave me these pictures. Right. right? Yeah. And the and the play structure is basically aged out to where the manufacturer either no longer holds the part or. Um, it just doesn't exist and it's really no longer in it's it's I, it's grandfathered in into the codes but it's really not um, held up to today's standards um, so what you're seeing here there's a huge crack in this slide and the solution has been just to put that um little i don't know what those are called but little caution thing barrier, barrier. barrier. Yeah. Um, at one point there was a caution tape and, and that's essentially it so you're basically like two three-year-olds what does that mean to them 
Um, and then currently half of it is bordered up. Um, the little tunnel too, if you keep going. So that's been damaged. Um, that little tunnel piece is boarded up. You can no longer access. So the solution was uh, proposed to basically divide the play structure. And, you know, I mean, I, I would assume that that affects its integrity at that point. So that's all boarded up. There's cracks, there's rust, there's um, just really kind of hazardous conditions. Um, so yeah, just this more. Is the top of the slide. Yeah, so that's the top of the slide is boarded up now. Um, at one point, like the tire string, the tire swing was removed and it was replaced with something significantly smaller. It's just a lot of band aid fixes. So we're getting weird replacement parts, or they're just being removed completely because they're no longer um, safety compliant. Um, so yeah, if you see like our swings, our the structures, it's all rusted. It's all just you know we're in terror of twenty five years of use. So yeah, the, the proposal was just to completely remove that component and then essentially you'd have two separate play structures. Um, this slide has is, is supposedly been ordered, but it was ordered five months ago and the manufacturer has said it's backlog. So to me, that says like, it just doesn't exist. And like, so we don't know what's gonna happen to that slide other than probably just be removed and not replaced. Um, I think there's concerns of vandalism occurring on, on the park. So as you see that little bubble has been cracked and destroyed right there. But it's just sitting there, like there's nothing. And I think, um, you know, surrounding there was trees that were like removed, but never replaced. It's just our, our park is being torn apart. And, you know, I know Parks and Rec Services uses that area. Um, you know, a lot of our kids in the area use that, schools use that park and so you know some, something needs to be done about it. I, I did uh, before we get into the contents of whatever letter uh, uh, would be proposed I just because when I saw the photos I, I said okay well we have a, a an older playground at a German park and I, I so I went out there last week and just to take some photographs of it to show you too because it, it's actually not in it's in better condition but it's not in good condition right okay so and these things are generally not repairable. Uh, they're, they're, they have an, a, a certain amount of life, and then you have to take them out, replace or replace components. So, like our, our, this is German Park. Um, the the what I will say is the the playground. All the features are usable, and I don't I didn't recognize any safety concerns, immediate safety concerns. But you have some of the same, like you know, chipped up. This is you know like a powder coated finish where that's been chipped up. All of this rubberized, this is like a steel uh, braiding. It's all coated in like a rubberized material that's dried and beginning to crack. Uh, um, so here's some like evidence of like some chipped material, uh, the, the powder coating or paint has been kind of worn off. So you have some of the sim some similar conditions uh, uh, here. Again, no nothing that was like damaged, um, but, but worn. Um, again, more evidence of some chipping and it just again, gen, just general showing it, showing its age. Uh, here's the top of the swing, kind of a similar condition. This is this is an example, maybe the worst of the examples. So this is this rubberized coating. This isn't really repairable. This is a, a, a they take this material and kind of coat it in rubber, and then over time it 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 cracks. These are pretty small cracks, but they're still quite visible. If you could kind of put your fingernail in them, if you if you try. So I just wanted to you know if um, if TCSD or the Templeton Community Services Board of Directors was going to write uh, a letter requesting the county improve the playground. I'd want to focus it on usability of the features and use of the, you know, it being important to use the community and maybe not focus on, um, you know, paint or rust or things like that. Because I think that, that our own stuff is, 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 is aging. Right. So uh, I guess the, the, the thought of it's is also that uh, there's been a lot of concern of you know where are the property taxes going where where is the money going because there wasn't really a replacement plan for this play structure um so obviously the the issue of play structures is kind of like a, a county-wide um, dilemma but this particular park or play structure is in such a dilapidated state that you know we really want to garner attention to it um, from the county but we also recognize that there's going to be some fundraising efforts because the county is just going to produce 
um, just a, a safety code standard play structure. But I think um, the community has basically gathered together and wants to do kind of a feature play structure and that's going to take fundraising. So we're working with like the Chamber of Commerce, we're working with other organizations to to fundraise for kind of the bells and whistles of a, of a play structure. But um, in regards to the advocacy component, it's just uh, our just our it's way way past due. I don't know the age of this park in, in particular, the one for the district, but our this county park um, is just beyond its uh, date of, of some type of life expenses. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I didn't look up when this was installed, but we're as you can kind of see, we're kind of nearing the end too on our on the, the 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 playground at, at German Park, and you know it won't. You know, we don't have 10 more years of life of this life expectancy of this. I, I don't, it doesn't need to be replaced next year, but I, I don't think it'll make it 10 more years before we start running into safety concerns. And, and, and this, these are, they're, they're not cheap. This, you know, what's, what's out at German park, may be two thirds, the size of what's here somewhere along this, a lot of the elements have been removed from the County park. So it's, I, I don't really remember what was there before. I mean, there were some other, I haven't had little kids in a long time. So I haven't invested a lot of time. It was in like that. those little rockers. Yeah, they were like a yeah, two no features. Compatible. Um, obviously, you know, our our focus is just that it's just such a centralized part of our town. Um, we did send out a petition, and we got nearly a thousand community members support. So this is definitely like a passion project for our community, and essentially, we're just. We're not asking the district to highlight the safety issues or anything like that. It's just a kind of just a letter of support that, um, you know, this this is a central part of the community that, you know, the district um, just supports any type of uh, fund, funds or the, encourages the county to to evaluate um, funding for this for this part. No. Is, is Tira developing a sample letter of support or something? That... Yeah, I think uh, so. Jeff English is our is our current president, and so I think he's putting together uh, kind of a draft of, of essentially what we're looking for. Um, but yeah, so it's it's not you know we don't want an assessment of the safety concerns. Obviously, all the parks kind of have a similar concerns to that, but it's mostly our community has spoken. Um, you know, the district stands by our community and that, um, you know, we, we would really encourage the, the, the county to to prioritize this project. Or... When, when we go to replace like German Park, that'll be like 75 grand-ish? I think for the size of that one, probably about, yeah, 60 to 75, today's numbers, right? Yeah. Uh, there's always some sales that are going on, different elements that we can look at. Um, but for a structure of that type and size, yeah, I think, yeah, 75 was so maybe here. Pretty appropriate. Thinking about if you this is probably 150. 150. Yeah. 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 Just looking at the size of it. Um, like the swing set is a separate element itself, right? Which would need to be replaced. And that alone is going to be 10 to 15. So, because just and that's safety just standards like are pretty. Basic. Today's oh yeah, that's a, exactly. Yeah, so I think exactly. that, and that doesn't always include install, right? Because right. you have to have the install crew come and do it. Um, it's got to be a very specific, you know, people who are specifically trained for install, right? And then uh, honestly, they'll have to take out all the chips, right? So they'll have to put in another probably sixty cubic yards of chips in there, right? I don't even know um, if chips are compliant in. Is they add them every year. I saw the truck out this year, actually. So they do add them. There's a truck that comes out. So we get them manually. But if we, if we do a complete you. renovation <laughs> of the space structure, I don't, our, our chips are kind of grandfathered into... Uh, chips are still standard. Are still standard. Yes, yeah. chips are still allowable. There's <laughs> different... It, 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 it measure the depth. Okay. The chips will use... That's exactly what you want. So they're, the way they do it, they get like a, a weight, right? And you drop it, and it's got to be able to have enough give to allow that weight not to sink or not to thud, right? Because it's like a... It's a cushion. But you're right. Certain certain things like you used to, you remember when, when I was a kid, it was sand. Right. Yeah, no, we can't use hot metal slides. We can't have the sand. We have that like makeshift like sandbox. Yeah. 
at litter. It's a litter box, yeah. So no sand and like rubberized chips we're moving away from because a lot of them were used with uh, for, like tire, recycled tires and there's uh, sharp elements in there. So they tend to start moving away from the recycled I heard the heat tire really rubberized and exactly. I think sand makes they smell. Like the emergency like yep. renovation. Of exactly. Them. So wood chips and then uh, uh, rubber mats, right? Like if you've been to the Parents for Joy Park in Tascadero, uh, Barty Schwartz has them, right? Where the it's just a rubber mat that is, is laid out. I am willing to bet we'll get wood chips, right? Because wow. that's the the cheap and it still meets standards. So, so I mean, overall, there's there's a community outcry of this, and you know, I think it would good for the district to kind of stand by the community and say yes you know we can stand with Templeton and you know this this park essentially needs some love um, yeah. but obviously you know the technical terms of the letter we would propose probably what yeah I've not, I've not seen a, a sample right. yet hopefully that's something that's coming if, if yeah. I want to consider I, I just would want the committee to recognize that I don't um I wouldn't recommend we get into the nitty gritty because our own, I don't want to be like accused of like the, the pot calling the kettle black kind of a situation. Right. Our own playground, the district's playground is, is, um, is at the end of its life too, or it's, it's, it's not as nearly, it's not as bad as what we've got out here, but it's, uh, it's got, it's, 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 you know, it's showing its age. And is there going to be any issue with any precedent at all with, well, obviously it's the county, uh, you know, responsibility. So for TCSD to do this, is there any problem with that? Well, I mean, you do have an activated Parks and Recreation Authority. I think the to the extent that we plan our priorities to serve the community based on what the existing, what's existing. In, in other words, if this park wasn't here, mm -hmm. and that playground wasn't here, maybe that's where our, maybe we'd be, there'd be a different uh, different goals of providing services because this this park really does serve the sort of downtown central core of, of of Templeton. It's that's that's where they get that's where they get the park space from. You know, we've made it a big priority to try to add a playground playground features at Evers Park because there isn't that's too far away from here, and there's a park and no there's a park without a playground. It's sort of kind of bizarre. So um, uh, I I think that we can structure it in such a way that. We recognize that this park is meeting our our, our communities our needs are met in part because this park exists, and um, uh, you know that the play the playground features are failing. But I, I, I guess I want to be careful about how we go. You know, a little bit careful. About how we want to say that the structure is failing and just that. Well, but it kind of. I mean, right. I know, but if we don't want to open that door, then I mean, we can just. You know, it's it's a play structure that serves our, our community, and you know, there's there's new features out there available to support a more like diverse population of people, like Joy Park, that's geared towards you know autistic children and, and you know neurodivergent yeah. children, and and I think that's really kind of the message is that this this park no longer kind of serves the needs of our community. So what is the County say when I mean I'm sure I mean I know John Pichon was there so when he saw this I mean what did he say he said well this is me there's no money in the budget they and that. that the part you know there's a replacement park part ordered for the slide but it's back ordered wow. and that no no more okay. parts are available for a certain so so it Quimby was not a can go through uh, to this or no yeah Quimby so unlike parks capital fees that we collect, which can only be used for adding a park space. Quimby fees can be used to either add or renovate parks. Um, and they get, they've taken all our Well, Quimby so this would be a good, the time, so, uh, you know. Um, and nothing I, comes back to us. I was, I was advised that our Quimby fees were originally going towards an Atascadero trail connection. But um, I was told that the railroad company is not going to um, consent to any type of connector over their property. So, um, you know, now there's that pool of money that has been reserved for that project. And it might be kind of a good time to advocate for another potential uh, use of those funds. Now, you know, I have to verify all that information, and but the county does set their 
budget priorities in November. And so that's why the Rec Foundation is doing um, more focus on the advocacy efforts at this point to ensure that it gets uh, put on their priority as a, a budget priority. Obviously, we're up against like a deficit and um, the homeless um, prioritization, but the point is to highlight this issue and um, use this park as as kind of a, a headliner for why um, they, they really need to start setting aside money for these replacements of these place structures. Yeah, this, this is the end result of yeah. like, and we have, you know, we yeah, replace so, our stuff. Right. <laughs> so if, if, if when, when, when our playground is ready to, is it, when the time has come and it's coming, Oh. Uh, um, we would we would fund we would recommend its funding out of asset oh, out of parks and recreation asset replacement. The replaced. problem is that doesn't exist. Yeah. No, I'm not saying it's not. It exists. may exist within the district, but it not. It exists, but they refuse okay. to. I don't know that. It exists, but they refuse. I don't, yeah, I don't know how they. I don't know what their plan right. strategy is for for and for parks maintenance. Uh, you know, I, the goal uh, is not to have the district take up the fight or the the advocacy effort with the county, the, the goal is to essentially just have the district, you know, stand, stand with well, the community. I mean, and, I guess T TRF is essentially taking on the advocacy so, I mean, component yeah, of it. If, so. you know, we should see the, you know, see the letter run it by the manager right. and then. So is there, I guess what I'm looking for is, is there, you know, assuming the draft, the sample letter is coming, is there a recommendation from the committee to to to, to advance this to the board yes. and to have the board authorize a, a letter um, requesting the county um, you know make improvements to the playground structure to again for at, at a minimum the thing should be usable right and, exactly I mean yeah. should be boarded up and yeah 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 I'm I'm okay yes okay. I'm okay so yeah as soon as as soon as we have yeah, something yeah. maybe from Jeff <laughs> <right. Get checked. laughs> A quick celebration. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean we we are we are presenting to tag next month as well. So you're you're kind of the first of, of the several organizations that we're planning to approach. Um you know, we have the Rotary Club, the school district, everybody. We kind of we just want to show up at the board of supervisors meeting and say, This is this is our community. All aspects yeah. of our community want to make this a priority and you know we were also willing to fundraise to make it a state-of-the-art park but you need to match us and meet at least the minimum requirement I mean, today's standards and so you to do that though you gotta also think about security because vandalism and things like that i i just yeah, yeah that's it. that's yeah. uh i think that's unavoidable in a lot of public places um but yeah it's true yeah somehow all right okay Next next item, the recreation program updates. Yeah. Thank you. Look, it's been an hour and 45 minutes, guys. <laughs> so I'm gonna be quick. Yeah, I, I think we all need to stand yeah. up and stretch here. Number one, we have a turf tank. All right. We got uh we put it up to the uh community okay. via Facebook. We've decided their name is Linus. Wow. Linus the robot. Yeah. Because they line, up, they line us. So <laughs> we're going to put some googly eyes on the bad boy, maybe some uh, changeable. Oh, yeah. How satisfying is that? Perfect. <laughs> this is, uh, I picked this clip specifically because number one, beautiful dirt on the grass. Number two, <laughs> I'm messing with you, no. uh, Number two, uh, we can see how even through uneven spacing, right? Uh, uneven uh, surfacing, uh, it paints a pretty straight line. Um, in fact, a perfectly straight line. So really exciting. Also, look at us all standing around. <laughs> watching it happen. Yeah. Uh, but the, the picture here, uh, my favorite part of this picture, so if you see the bottom part of it, right, uh, that's not necessarily a good example because we, we skewed the field a little bit, but the, the line above it, right, that is basically the same line. Look at the straight line versus the line our humans created, oh, right? So go Linus, all right? Linus is very impressive. So it just oh, it has a suspension. It's the uneven, exactly. So the uneven, you know, we're pushing our uh, hand painter, right? It gets, it catches. It's impossible for us to push it in a straight line. Um, so having the robot, you know, adjust appropriately 
uh, with the suspension system. I mean, it's it's incredible. So we got all of our field, nine fields painted uh, last week, and huge improvement, How long did vast it take? improvements. How long did it take? So to do, it took two days to get them all uh, set up in the system. I'd say actually closer to a day and a half to get them all set up in the system. Um, so, cause we have different field sizes than what's recommended cause it comes preloaded with recommended field sizes, right? Uh, it took a couple days to get them all input into the system and then lines. So this week will be the first time that we go copy the lines that are already in existence. And I'm super curious how long that'll take uh, for the first week where it's all set up, right? So yeah, so you I think it will take, uh, as an example, I was gone for 30 minutes uh, to go uh, deal with an issue at the office. The largest field at Evers was set up and painted by the time I got back, right? So uh, huge amounts of staff time saved, huge amounts. So um, the setup is a little, uh, was kind of what took the most amount of time because we were learning this new process, right? Um, but everybody learned it. I set a field up, Kyle set a field up. Um, I think Chris watched it being set up. Um, it's very, I was super pumped on how user-friendly it was. So very simple to do. And now it's done. So all we do is like, we set up our little uh, GPS coordinator thing, uh, which has things in the ground to make it happen. We tell the robot we want to paint this field, start here, go. And then we go pick up trash, we pick up rocks, we kill gophers, whatever we're doing. Um, but I was absolutely impressed and it's already amazing. Uh, lots of compliments too from all the all the people on the fields, uh, all the people at soccer on Saturday. They were like, wow, these lines are great. The refs were super excited because uh, it's really hard to call you know things when you have lines that are so off, off kilter. So. Super pumped about Linus. We were all very happy about Linus. Linus. So Linus, it's a good name. It's a good name. Nice. So yeah, it's fantastic. And I'm excited to see what happens, what comes next. We talked to the softball board last night about it. Uh, the softball field two is not squared up properly. It never really has been. Uh, so we're gonna be probably digging up the bases or the anchors for the bases at least and squaring up the field in the next coming months. Um, we can use it to identify areas for uh, when we're going to cut the lip out, right, of the softball field. So we can just go along the line and then have the utility crew uh, and the parks crew sort of cut the edges, right, with a perfect little line that is exactly where we want to go. So we don't have to uh, visualize it. We don't have to draw it out. It's just done by Linus. So very pumped about it. So uh, that's kind of the big update. Like, we're super excited about this turf tank. Um, we have 830 kids playing soccer this year, which is great. Uh, it is down a little bit from last year, but uh, explainable because Paso uh, got their act together on time this year and uh, advertised appropriately and got everything ready. Uh, so, and we do not have a high school team. So that's usually about 30 to 45 boys that we'd be playing. So we don't have a high school boys team because the high school themselves decided to do things a little differently this year. Um, which good for them. So uh, numbers are down in an appropriate, explainable way, and it's still 84 teams. Um, we fun. did charge the the larger out of district fees this year, so I'm curious to see how that all flushes out when we get our bank recs back um, for the for the income specific to soccer. We're coming up on week three, so we'll see how it goes. We have the community cleanup this weekend. Saturday we'll be here. Uh, getting things uh, picked up, all the trash picked up before the rains come from washing everything into the creeks and then therefore into the oceans. So it's part of that larger eco slow uh, creeks to coast day. Uh, so hopefully we'll have a bunch of volunteers in here doing with the pickers and the bags and the grabbers picking up. Uh, last year, I think we had 0.3 tons of trash picked up. So not bad. Basketball registration starts the first week of October. I think for us, that's in October 3rd. Uh, so getting ready for everything that means. We did wrap up flag right before uh, flag football right before soccer started. Remember there were over 300 kids in that. So biggest season so far. Um, and the garden out there. I don't know if we've been had a chance to go out to the garden uh, with the community garden that uh, that we host. There's the giving garden part of it. It is thriving. We have had so many people who are food poor come in and uh, get some fresh veggies just 
you know, on the on the down low, come pick up all the foods that we've been growing out there. So huge kudos to Gretchen with the Giving Garden. And then some of the skate park guys have taken over parts of the garden and growing some beautiful food. They feed everybody out there at the skate park all the time. So it's been pretty exciting. Um, it's kind of nice to see them do something positive for their community. They look like a bunch of knuckleheads, but I promise they're, they're great kids. Uh, so uh, things seem to be going pretty well out there. We're just uh, plugging along, busy as ever. Making it happen. So that's what we got. That's great. Thank you very much. Appreciate all your hard work. Uh, thank you. It's, it's just great to see all the all the youth working on uh, working and having a good time. So I appreciate that. All right. I think that's it. Uh, just future items and specific. Yeah. Did the committee have any requests for future items or? I think we've closed out with these, anything that was later yeah, in the last few days. I think you guys have all the directions, so I'm not, I think we're good, so just whatever. Yeah, there'll be a couple items from today's meeting that would come before, like three things to, to the, the board. board the, yeah. Obviously, the mid-state assignment, big big deal, and a bunch of work that has to be done between now and October 3rd, if we can make that date, tree, budget amendment, and then the the, yeah. the letter of yeah. support for TRF yeah. and, and, and the playground park. Anything you want? Mm -hmm. Good. Awesome. Okay, then. Meeting adjourned.